Welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. Okay, it's time to tell you what we've been plotting. Jeff Kanata, producer Logan, and I have decided we're going to listen to the people. We're going to continue the short episodes. Yay! A lot of you are celebrating, but we're also going to continue doing long episodes. Yay! Just once a week, though. So we won't make you watch a 20-minute episode every day, but if you want to tune in to a longer format show with guests and segments and field packages and all that stuff... We're going to start doing that soon. Uh, we'll keep you posted on that. But Jeff Kanata is going to start doing one short episode a week starting next week. So you can hope to see his glorious face Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of next week. All right, guys. Let's hit the headlines. The Tokyo Motor Show is honestly the gift that keeps on giving this week. So yesterday we talked about Motobot. And today we're talking about Toyota's concept car that aims to power your home. The FCV Plus debuted earlier this week. It's a hydrogen-powered concept vehicle, but Toyota thinks the idea behind it is the future of personal transportation and energy. It's got electric motors in each wheel, a fuel cell between the front tires, and the hydrogen tank between the two back tires. The car converts hydrogen gas into electricity so that you can drive your car around, but Toyota says it won't stop there. And it shouldn't. They think if you haven't used up your electricity by the time you get home, you could potentially hook up your car to a larger hydrogen tank and generate power for either your house, a business, or other objects. Of course, the thing missing here is a pretty huge piece of the puzzle, major hydrogen infrastructure, which won't be cheap or easy to build out. But Toyota seems pretty confident that this is the future of both clean power in your car and clean power at home. Ambitious, but also pretty exciting to think about. Now, speaking of ambition, let's talk about and take a closer look at the winners of Google's Project Tango App Developer Contest. Super quick recap, Project Tango is Google's experiment that uses handheld devices that bring spatial awareness through motion tracking, depth perception, and area learning technologies. Basically, Project Tango devices want to be really, really good at 3D mapping what it sees in the real world in real time. So who won Google's app contest? Heroic Arcade took best in show with its 3D puzzle game We Are Cube Tango, which looks like it relies a lot on moving the device around to solve puzzles. Other winners include a 3D model capturing app for Tango from developer Dot Products and a fun-looking multiplayer AR game from developer Flarb. Project Tango is still in early stages, but you can pick up a developer tablet for just over 500 bucks if you're itching to make something really, really awesome using the Project Tango platform. All right, so the very last thing today, we love really cool, intelligent toys for kids on Tomorrow Daily, and Linky is definitely in that category. Linky is from designer Yoon Young Park, and it's a simple-looking kit with some bigger ideas tucked inside. The kit comes with a pegboard, 16 bars, two circles, and four other shapes that can be assembled and adjusted to create two-dimensional kinetic designs. The bars and shapes can be hand-driven, or you can use one of three kinds of motors included to animate your design. There's a full rotation motor, a limited rotation motor, and an interactive motor that rotates based on a Wi-Fi signal sent from a sensor unit. Park says the 2D mechanism is important because it lets anyone hack Linky by making custom parts from cheap materials like cardboard available to the user. The idea is to offer a toy that can teach kids about a complex idea, but in a simple way. Honestly, though, I think Linky would be really appreciated by science-minded adults, too. It would look really, really cool on anybody's desk. It's still in prototype stages, so you can't exactly surf on over to Amazon and put one in your cart, but we'll keep an eye on Linky, and we'll let you guys know if it ever hits retail. All right, guys, that's it for the headlines for the week. Let's talk about Into It. This week, well, it's Halloween. So what else could I possibly be into but classic horror movies? I love this time of year because it lets me kind of dust off ye old fantastic 70s and 80s horror movies like The Exorcist, Shining, uh, The Thing, I mean, pretty much and Poltergeist. I mean, these are great classic films and I love to watch them around Halloween. It just amps me up for getting out there. I obviously, I can't trick or treat, but I, I do get really excited about the holiday. I'm going to dress up. It's going to be great. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm into this week. And if you haven't seen those horror films and you're old enough to handle them, or if you like horror movies, because some of you are terrified by them, so don't watch them. But if you love horror movies, you should definitely watch the classics. Well worth your time. All right, Producer Logan, time for your Into It. Hey, everyone. This week, I'm into the Apple TV. Yes, I know it's not out yet, but I'm really into actually trying the Apple TV. The TV is the most used device in my apartment. 
Uh, I use it because I refuse to watch content on an iPad or my laptop. So I'm really excited that Apple TV is going to consolidate all the streaming content that I enjoy into one device. With that, we get a new Apple TV remote, and I will no longer be pushing buttons like a sucker. The new remote has a built-in microphone for Siri, and I can't wait to try and stump her with all of her brand new movie and TV knowledge. What I'm most excited about is the What Do They Say feature, in which the playhead is backed up about 15 seconds, and the closed captioning is temporarily turned on, so you can catch that phrase that maybe you couldn't hear. And although I'm not really a big mobile gamer, I am really excited to see what they look like on the big screen. So any day now, it should be showing up in the mail, and I just can't wait to get my hands on it. All right, let's take a look at your photos. It's Photographer of the Day. Our Photographer of the Day today is Christian, who took this lovely photo on his HTC Desire 820S. He wrote into us and said, Probably won't make it into the show, but really liking your mini episodes. I took these photos at West Twittering Estate UK when I was having a day out on the weekend, and of course you have my permission to use these photos in your show. Well, Christian, great work on these pictures. Again, like you guys send in pictures and I get really excited because I want to go to all these places you send pictures of. And if you guys want to send in your photography to be considered for featuring on the show, you can email us tomorrow at CNET.com. If you want to share the show with somebody, which we always appreciate, you can send them right over to tomorrowdaily.com. It's that easy. And of course, you can find us on social media at Tomorrow Daily. And I'm at Ashley Sketh on Twitter. And producer Logan is at Logan Moy. That's it for the show this week. We'll be back on Monday with a brand new docket of weird science fact and science fiction smashing together, blowing up in your face, and being all kinds of awesome. But until then, be good humans. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>